I've got a challenge for you right now. Okay. Is it about bees? <gasps> Bring Can we up. talk about the bees? Right. I think you wrote this personally. Is it? Is it yeah. <laughs> so Listen, I'm trying. Look, I'm way into my honey, but yeah, carry on. I was just trying to get a free during bee. During lockdown, he had purchased his first bee colony and was hoping to release his own brand of honey called Tom Beacon. Right. <laughs> Do you know what? I would love to say that's true. It's not, but I, I love it. Like. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of In The Lobby. Uh, you all right there? Is this an ASMR episode? No, I'm just, oh, I see what's no, happening no, I, here. I, 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 <laughs> I do have. He's been told off. I do have a notoriously loud voice and uh, another man has just pointed out to me and I cannot wait to introduce him on our podcast here. But I am going to do it a bit loud. I'm going to do it a bit loud. He is radio DJ, TV presenter and wonderful comedian, Tom Deacon in the house. Oh, yeah. What's going on, Tom? Um, Lots of stuff. And I'm, I'm glad that I can get an opportunity to voice it all. You know? Huh? Yeah. That's a weird start, but I've gone for it. No, lots <laughs> is going on. And this is an absolute delight to to meet you finally, in Yeah. And to, to meet you again, Harry. This is great. I know. We did a little event back when, didn't we? Way you back were ask, when. You were asking me some questions. I was probably miserably failing at them. Yeah, because it was cryptocurrency and uh, no one cared. So... Uh, <laughs> To put it bluntly, we were all struggling. But uh, it, was yeah. a, it was a lot of fun. It, it was a struggle, but it was fun. Asking me any question, to be fair, is never worth uh, putting on online. So, yeah. And the but, first and the first question I said to Ian was, "Ah, oh, do they turn your mic down deliberately?" And we had a good discussion. Yeah. So, for the record, for the, for the years I've been a broadcaster, I always get my mic turned down every single time. And sometimes I try. Like when I used to do radio work. I would specifically go in with the purpose of going, I'm going to be a little bit quieter today, a, bit, a little bit more subdued. And I'll be like, hey, here's Madonna. Oh, <laughs> you know, um, so That's it's hard just, to it's maintain. Just, I, yeah, and I would do the same. If you walked in to the studio unannounced, I'd go, it's Madonna. <laughs> but if it's if she's not there and you're just playing her track, then it's, you can tone it down. But then That's the problem it. is... If you, are, the case. if you are quite a loud person and you've done work for people before, mm. they expect you to be the same. So even if you want to just be a bit more mellow, yeah. just a bit more relaxed, hey, it's Tom Deacon, what's happening? How oh, you doing? Like They're like, no, no, we don't, we didn't book that. We, did, we don't want that. We want Books, you at your the full, the full level. Full capacity. I mean, yeah. that is, you're, you're not like that in person. You don't, no. You're very, you, you know how to voice yourself mm -hmm. for recording purposes. Yeah. So. I mean, the thing is, Tom, you see a lot of my clips online, right? Uh, you mentioned you saw them on my Instagram. So what That's I do tend to Instagram, put up yeah. on there is my arena hype moments. But I do have other sections where I'm a bit mm. more. Hey guys, how we yeah. do? It can't all be hype, can it? No, you can't. You've got to you've got to ride the wave. But my Instagram is all hype. Well, <laughs> apart from you gaming in your pajamas on your uh, yeah which, VR headset, which is never getting posted on my Instagram. When, when do you hit top levels? When you, when do you hit that sort of almost Ian level? <sighs> mm, that's a very good question. Probably when I'm playing a game that just infuriates the hell out of me, I would Rich. say that's, that's probably about as angry as I ever get or as vocal as I ever get is mm. when I'm playing something that makes me scream. Yeah. What is your like go-to angry game? What makes you so mad? What game? R Rage game. Because Ian you... notoriously just plays like Zelda. Yeah, I'm a pretty chilled gamer. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. I it's, can imagine that in your head. It's all do, 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 just, and it's new, what about what about your new golf obsession? Oh, listen, I'm playing golf on VR at the moment, right? Virtual reality. P.S. If you listen to the last episode, I'm going to talk about it briefly again. But He's not stopped talking about you it. You can't rage on it because you are literally stood next to another virtual reality person who's playing online. So if I miss my shot and I'm like, God, jerk, or whatever. Yeah. He, this guy from Australia is like, chill out, bruv. Like, yeah. It's just a game of golf. Just a little me characters just standing there. Yeah. Do you ever get angry on video games? Yeah, just the amount of downloads for Call of Duty, Modern yeah. Warfare. Because oh um, I forget <laughs> about I've a week. stopped bothering. And then you go to play with your friends and it's like, oh, here's an 80 gig download that you haven't done yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. So I just rage about the fact, oh, it's four hours now. Four hours, fine. And then my wife's like, are you, did you not download? No, I didn't download. No, that's not important. <laughs> And I've sort of keyed up a bit of time, ready for it. And I'm, yeah. Right. Anyway, so that's when I rage. Not the game. I'm laughing and giggling yeah, most yeah, of the time. Yeah. But yeah, it's the well, downloads. That's positive. Yeah. Tom, I, I want to talk about you and, and how you got into video games and all that sort of stuff. Because I know you've worked in esports as well. But I just want to run it back for a minute because... I thought you were just like some young... <laughs> Sorry, I wondered where this is going. I looked at you when you walked in today. <laughs> and I'm just going to let you know, I think you're... <laughs> I thought you were a run it. Keeper Let's take it back. Let's, let's take it way, back. way back. All right, let's go way back. So like, Ooh, I wasn't aware of like how long of a tenure you have as a broadcaster. 
um, across lots of different genres, platforms, mediums, whatever else you want to call it. But when did you first pick up a mic <laughs> and go in front of people and say, That's a good question. all right, I'm a comedian now? Or like, was it, was it radio first? Was it TV? How did it all begin for you? Um, good question. Jack of... Yeah, master of none are basically what you've you've implied there. I picked up <laughs> the subtones were there. You've done lots of stuff. What are you actually good at? Um, I think uh, for me, starting doing stand up comedy when I was at, at uni, yeah, and I always wanted to do it. And uh, they had like open mic nights back mm. in Southampton, and that was essentially where you'd have a, a musician on. It was just mainly musicians, and uh, and then there would be a couple of people, myself and another guy, would stand up for ten minutes, and they had a traffic light in the corner. And it would start off at, at green, then it would go amber when you've got two minutes left, and then red, get off the stage. And, off, yeah. and that is mm. one of the toughest environments to start, because they weren't there to listen. They were there to listen to music and then carry on their chat. So I, I started there, but then it was a comedy club in, um, in Exeter where I was at uni. And then, yeah, just knew I wanted to do that. And then that led to other opportunities like presenting and then radio eventually. And then... Fast forward a little bit more uh, to someone saying, hey, would you like to host the Elite Series for Gfinity? And that really started me off in the esports world. Yes. I think we both know Amanda. From, uh, we do. Yeah. And I've got so much to be, re an amazing woman. She is. Uh, she's working in Japan at the moment, I think doing uh, sh uh, like big productions out there. But I have a lot to be grateful for her getting me into yeah. this world, giving me an opportunity. And that's what it is. Whatever you're doing is just say yes to things. And that's kind of what I've done. And then I've ended up going, do you want to do this voiceover work? Yeah, right. Sounds great. Do you want to do yeah. this? Yeah. Do you want to travel to Brazil for a football show? Yeah. That sounds, why would I not? So that's basically me in a nutshell. And I've done lots of amazing stuff. Just to clarify, Amanda, shout out to her. She actually previously Gfinity, now Hang Loose Media. Like you say, great person. Um, but like comedy, it, I always found, I love watching stand-up comedy. Like especially yeah. here yeah. in London, there's a lot of it to consume. Mm -hmm. Like every night of the too week, much. pretty much. There is probably too, too much. Too much, yeah. And, and, some, and sometimes I go, and this is a guilty pleasure, but I get I enjoy the feeling of, oh, this is... Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's horrible. But oh, I, when no. a comedian's struggling oh, no, no, on stage. No, no, no. Oh, I don't know why I enjoy it, but I oh, do. Oh, that's but horrible. No, How could you enjoy that? No, but I love... <laughs> Because I love when a comedian's funny, just like more. But when you still enjoy, you still enjoy like where you're gonna take this next. Yeah. Because, you know, I was I went to go see Ricky Gervais two weeks ago. I, I just got last second tickets to go see Gervais and Friends, and he, obviously they were all great comedians. But Ricky to me is like a, a just a, a master. Right? You don't even need to do much, and I'm just laughing mm. my head off at him because <laughs> there's so much history and heritage there as a viewer. But then they'll bring on one of his friends, and it can be awesome. But it just doesn't hit the same because everyone's like, when's Ricky coming back on? Because <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, yeah. we've all got friends that are great and then you introduce them to someone else and you go, you've really let me down, mate. <laughs> Everyone thought you were going to be, I, I had high hopes for you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to be a 10 out of 10 when I introduced <laughs> another mate to a new group. <laughs> and yeah, that happens. But that what, what Ian's talking about is those awkward moments when oh. you're in a crowd and some people hate that feeling. I can't stand it. Or Ian That's my loves it. worst fear. I, I just can't. I can't watch anything that make like public scenarios of like really awkward things. Just make me. I just can't. I really don't like it, and I don't know what it is about me that just. How can you watch that and not feel just like everything for them and not feel horrible for them? For sure. No, I that's, get it. that's messed up, Ian. <laughs> no, but it's because, right? I, I know that there's a. It's not the same. But like when I go out in front of a crowd or whatever in esports or whatever it is. And I say, make some noise or like, let me, there's a, there's a, I know that going out there, I'm putting it on the line in the sense that you, the all might just say, get lost, you loser, get off the stage, you are you. And it's not the same because you, you, I'm not delivering line after line after line or whatever, but there is a risk, right? And I imagine that all comedians to a certain level, when you step up there, you've got to be aware of it. So like, yeah. as an audience member, you can be like, oh, well, you put, you, you put yourself on the line here so I can sort of enjoy this now. Is that not fair? Yeah, they, they give you a grace, like, presenting or doing esports yeah you're not the center of attention yes. you are just making sure everyone knows what's happening you set the scene and then let the actual stars do what they need to do mm -hmm. and when you're a stand-up it is just very much you on stage yes and they're an audience give you a little bit of grace and then if you're not delivering then it gets awkward and the best thing is to see someone turn it round. That's what, I love, that's what yeah, I love the most. So, so you give them the charge, you go, oh, this is awkward, they've lost the crowd, oh no, this is so cringe. And then for them to pull it back round. Yep. But a comedian, when that's happening, is not enjoying that. We'd rather just get on stage, enjoy it, and then get off. And then the Talk me through like it. it. What's, has it ever happened to you? Yeah, I want to I wanna hear about your first experience like at, at uni, going up in the music club for the first time uh, and that, doing... 
Your first stand up. It's horrible. It's horrible. (laughs) (laughs) There's no fun in it. It's just, you think, I think this is funny. And then you suddenly have that doubt. You're like, all of this that I've prepared is not funny. And then you have that self doubt. And then when it lands, that's the best feeling. Oh, but when it doesn't, you just go, no, I knew that, knew that. And I'd like the world to, to swallow me up and, and just to hide. But the first time, like an open mic night for mu- musicians was very much a, a, they weren't there. So I had to work harder to get their attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, it, but to be fair, then it made it a bit gimmicky, the stuff to try and get a laugh. Right. And then when you're doing an actual comedy club night, people are there to come and see just stand up. They're not there to see someone with their guitar. So you can be cleverer with your your jokes and, and, and push it. But the first time I did it at uni, I told lots of people, which was a mistake. So then I could see familiar <laughs> faces in the crowd. And that was more pressure because I didn't want to fail in front of them. Yeah. So I, I never tell people I'm, I'm going to be on. I don't want that extra added I pressure. Feel that. I'd a rather lot. have strangers. Yeah. And I go, I am never going to see you again. So I don't care that that didn't work. Yeah. But this did, you know, and I'm, you know. How are you with that? Because I've always been the same whenever I'm doing something, whether it be like, I don't know, a performance, like when I was back in school or now Mm -hmm. if I'm like hosting an event or something, I don't want anyone I know around me to see what I'm doing to to watch me do it. Are you the same? Or are you just like all friends and family come along, watch me do my hosting gig? Uh, I I think... I mean, what you said is, is bang on, by the way. I just want to clarify. I was not comparing being eSports hosts. Oh, no, 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 no. I think you were. No, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, it, you, we are very much facilitators. I know you've done it yourself as well, but, like, it, it is that, that high-pressure environment of it all being on you. I think for me, I am actually a little bit nervous because mm, I can't announce this yet, but there's rumblings mm. of a big UK gig coming up. Okay. Um, and I will, all my friends want to come and, like, my family and stuff like that. Um, but I think that'll be fun because it's different. You know, everyone's there for the same purpose at that situation. Yeah. It's not like I'm trying to be like the, humor and comedy is such a unique thing because everyone's everyone's got different tastes. Right? So subjective, yeah, exactly. So subjective. Which must make it so much harder, like yeah. you said. If, yeah. if there's a big gig, which I think is going to be a brilliant night for like my best mates to come along to, or uh, my wife will be like, oh, someone at work would like to come and see you. And I go, that's fantastic. Good for them. But I'm, <laughs> they can do that anytime they want. I don't want to know they're there mm. for that extra pressure that now my wife has an expectation that I'm going to deliver uh, on that comedy night. But, but I will tell people, come along because this person's on and I think they're fantastic. So you're going to have a brilliant night mm-hmm. regardless. And if there's a big, like F1 esports, uh, an event, I would say to my wife or people who've never been before, come along because it's not about me. You'll just have an amazing yes. experience. Yeah. And I don't mind putting that. Th- there's no pressure on me then. It's because I'm telling them it's going to be Go, brilliant yeah. regardless. <laughs> it's yeah, well yeah, worth yeah. your money. Yeah. Come along. Yeah. Well, it's obviously, yeah, it's very different. Like going up there and, and being funny in front of people and trying to meet their expectations is obviously way different, like you said, to like mm. hosting a gig where, like an esports gig where the pressure is not on you to deliver in the same way that you deliver obviously like a comedy night yes you just have to make the event entertaining yeah for sure um oh and i still so feel yeah. that that pressure just before you go out there or whatever and because i mean the first time i ever did it i was just first stepped out in front of a big crowd rejected you know wow because esports crowds they have who they like and then if you step out it's like oh who's this? even you could be yeah you could be great, you could be whatever, but regardless, people are going to go, you're not the person who was here last time. <laughs> yeah, mm. but, it's, but as long as you t- you do what you set out to do and you do it well, then people will take you on board. That's eventually. it. The, the, the weird thing is, so you've got an instant reaction from a crowd there mm. and same with stand-up comedy and that helps the flow of me going, right, they're not enjoying that as much, maybe I'll do this bit. So I'm always thinking, uh-huh. radio, which I'm, as you mentioned at the, t- at the top, which I'm doing a sports show at the moment, even if I was to crack a joke, there is no reaction <laughs> yeah. other than the person in the studio goes, that's all I hear. Yeah. <laughs> I go, oh, I think that would, I think some people will enjoy it. So there's no, there's no. Is um, that better or worse? Oh, worse. 100% yeah, yeah. worse because you've got no feedback and you can't, well, that was, I felt I delivered that well, but live crowds are my favorite thing. It's such a weird thing. Cause I used to do, do like, um, not on your level at all, but like commercial radio in, in like the East Midlands and stuff. And um, we do like a game or like, you're right. It, the, the good thing about having, I had a co-host, mm. so she would react. Yeah, yeah. But even then, like a, a solo show is just like, oh, it's, it's so hard. Because, it, because it it's like, be talk, uh, and then I think streamers would be, sometimes would be fantastic radio 
yes. as hosts mm-hmm. because they're able to just, I find it quite difficult to just be on my own and go, so you're like, you're talking to yourself, but you're not talking to yourself. Yeah. And then there's no feedback and yeah. then you have to do all of the thinking of like, so I saw this the other day. Now, does it, it makes you wonder. So you have to add the, what someone else, a co-host would, would throw back at you. Yep. And I think yeah. streamers would be really good and then hit a track, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then go, Madonna, <laughs> that's what they have to do. <laughs> I think, you're definitely right, but a lot of <laughs> streaming definitely comes from like chat feedback as well. I always say to people like if if people ask me all the time like how do I start streaming? What do I do like if no one's watching? And I think that is the hardest thing to ever do if you're streaming to zero viewers to try and interact like you would if there were like a hundred people watching you. That's something I definitely struggled with to begin with, but now obviously it's a lot different, thankfully. And I just like feedback off of yeah. chat all the time, and I found myself getting to such a comfortable spot where I can like really be myself and we're just like cracking jokes between each other all the time but if there is no one on the receiving end of that that is the toughest thing in the world and sometimes I've been listening to the radio more recently and whenever they make a joke you can tell that there's like there's no like feedback for yeah, them yeah. it's like the other person and I'm sitting there I'm like oh god that but, was, but that's, rough. That's why you was rough have- but you have a co-host, you have the production team, that's why you listen to a lot of radio, it, what, what I do when I'm driving or what have mm. you, and they have people in the studio, they they give it you, the feedback that yeah. you would sort of normally have at a crowd. And I think uh, just with that whole streaming thing where you, you have to kind of almost fake that kind it's, of- You have to be so fake to begin with, yeah. To, to try and interact with nothing is just mm. so difficult because you just have to keep talking to yourself essentially all the time. It's so cool, uh, I didn't think about, I didn't put those two and two yeah. together. It's, 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 it's mm. very similar because you are just sitting in front of a mic. Yeah, even if you've got Twitch chat, it's yeah. still just words, it's not <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's that audible reaction that makes a huge difference. And then I remember doing uh, Radio 1 a long time ago, and then, so so you were talking about commercial radio, I've done commercial radio. When you're not getting any feedback, mm-hmm. when you're going, oh, this is the text number, this is the WhatsApp number, get involved. And then you keep looking at the screen and no one's getting involved. And you're like, oh, I thought it was pretty good the last bit we did. That little, qu- I thought that was pretty good. Why is no one it messaging? It makes you doubt yourself. It makes you doubt yourself. And then, but, but just, I was just going to say it about Radio 1, 8199, right, back in the day. There would just be constant messages coming through, like, yeah. you're crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I would, and I'd catch God. a glimpse of it and I'd be like, oh, that's, that, that's filled me with confidence. Uh, maybe I'll go, Madonna, next. <laughs> like, like you, <laughs> it, you, messes it, you it, it messes you up. So actually sometimes thing. the streaming side, if you're getting that, it's quite interesting to how to deal with it. There's so many similarities or connections. To, I, I, I remember the first time I ever did radio, I, I jumped, there was this big famous show called The Sam and Amy Show in the East Midlands, right? And I was doing local TV at the time and the the manager saw me on telly in his hotel room. And then he brought me in the following week to fill in for the Sam of the Sam and Amy. They'd been there like 10 years. And um, on the first link, and he was like, make sure you do a shout out for the text line. So I was like, all right, 63103, start your message with the word Jen, blah, 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 blah. And then first message that comes through, this guy's voice is horrendous. (laughs) And I look at the producer and I was like, does this happen a lot? And then all of a sudden I did this first opening link and I'm feeling real confident I'm like oh, I can do this I can do it and then the next one I'm like um. yeah, and it, 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 <laughs> just it, because one troll came at me yeah and it, but, but, and it, it did actually when I was doing Radio 1 it does your national radio and I was just thinking I was having a bit of fun and then you suddenly realise you are so important to people yeah like it's your journey you're ruining their car journey oh god <laughs> this is my That's... morning how dare you come? <laughs> even my wife does it when she's driving to work she goes oh someone in, was out, else was in for Ronan this morning I'm like hey why are you listening to magic and yep. two right? <laughs> should I play some bangers right? and I'm like okay and, and then she'll say but he wasn't in this week and it's and that's the same with if you're not that host that they're expecting mm-hmm. for an, an yeah. esports uh, event or they can't get you on stream or you on someone else's and oh, yeah it's a matter, it's a matter, and how you deal with that confidence wise. It grows over the years, I think. Yeah, I was gonna, that's, that was gonna be my next question. Obviously, I don't, I think hate comments have never really got to me that badly, but the ones that do get to me tend to more be the ones about my personality than anything else. People could say the worst ha! about my looks. Oh my God, I just swore. I'm so sorry. That's fine. We yeah. apologize the for the swear word that just happened. In fact, in fact, right? <laughs> just, to be clar- just to be clear, let's do this. Tom, I want you to make a sound okay. that will cover up the bad word. Is that possible? Okay. Oh, he's got this. Have I? There right. needs to be a short and snappy one. Ha! Yep, perfect. perfect. Can we put that over That's the That's awesome. brilliant. But people could say anything about my looks. <laughs> what was, the, that, was that your go-to, by the way? I was, I was thinking a quack or like a bark, but you went, ha! A quack would be quite hard to pull <laughs> off, no? 
Is that how really? That's not how quack sounds. How do you sound? Like right. Well, I can't. That was much better. Yeah. Give us one. No, I can't. So anyway, personality. You don't like people dissing your person. Yeah, your personality. It gets it gets to me more if they're saying something about my content or yes. what I'm doing than if they're saying something about my looks. My mother, I don't know, tends to be the go-to thing. That's never bothered me. But if someone comes on and says, "Oh, you're boring," like you're crap at this or whatever. That affects me way more. Yeah. Is that like something that you've had to get oh, over? Oh, the, the, the worst one, and this is years ago, at a particular club where the promoter said to me, look, you just need to do, just do 10 minutes. I was like, I've been booked for 20 minutes. I think you'll find I'll do 20 minutes. And she said, they're a really tough crowd. And I'd heard lots about this particular crowd been made to wait for a long time. And it was a proper left to right club. It wasn't deep. Like you couldn't, they, they went all in front of you. You kept having to turn to left to right for this crowd. And I was losing them, like, take me out. Do, do, the lights were going, right? <laughs> boo, 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 boo. I was just trying to give you that reference, right? And I'm thinking, I'm sweating now. I'm like, I don't even think I'll make it to 10 minutes here, right? Before they boo me or something. And then there's one guy in the front, and I'll never forget this because it crushed me so hard. Oh, no. God. Couldn't be heard by anyone else. He leant forward because he was that close to me on this stage, and he just went, You've got no personality. Oh my god. And then god. leant back into I was done. I was out. That was KO. KO! Hadouken. I was on the floor. Did you, and I just did, did you dip? And I was like, yeah, I, I think I managed about nine and a half minutes. I went, listen, I, I've learned a lot from this gig. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night. And I left and the whole tube journey home when I was living in London just was like I don't have any personality, do I? Do I have a personality? Oh. And it's those moments where they they, it, they, they question your personality mm. and the things that you love and do. I was like, I thought that was pretty, that's worked in other clubs. And and yeah, but just floored me because he was, yeah, just this that is one fast, vicious I, I, comment. I feel bad because this may be a gaming podcast and we will get onto that, but I've got so many, I, I, I'm so fascinated by this. But, but, then, but the gaming world, when yeah. I stepped into that with Amanda said, oh, look, here's an opportunity. Uh, the esports community can be quite savage. Mm -hmm. Just don't pretend you know things you don't. Yeah. And I had that mentality to go in. And I was nervous with the live audience we had or how people would react. But I just didn't try to be someone I wasn't. Yep. Mm -hmm. I had to be me. And But that was the kind of thing that was constantly in the back of my head, moving into an esports world and saying, I mean, I, I love playing CSGO. So that was fine when I was at uni. And then we had Rocket League and then we had Street Fighter Five. So I was on board with all of those games. They were great. But you can't fake it. And when people do pu pull it out and say, you don't actually know anything about this, you feel it more effective because mm. it's a personality thing. I always think as a, as a host, like you're not, you're not there to give this expert analysis or whatever else. You're there as like a facilitator of conversation for your analysts or mm. whatever else. And I've, I've, I've told this story a few times, I think, but when I did the the first um, Rainbow Six major in Charlotte in America, it was like, I was like so dead set like this is going to be amazing this crowd has gone through covid they haven't had this experience for so long i'm just going to walk out there and they're just going to gobble it up and then i'll go back in backstage and go guys that was great wasn't it and, high um, five people you really set yourself out for success there and i went out and like it was just a bit meh um and then i went i went and did what you should never do as a host and that was check the chat um and i checked the chat and everyone was like who's this guy where's he where have they pulled him from and then one guy said who's this uh Walmart m and &M, because I was dressed in like a black leather jacket and Jordans and stuff. And I read that and I was like, right. And I went back out and I, and I said, I just want to give a special shout out to the guy who said, I look like a Walmart m and <laughs> And the crowd laughed. Yeah. And then from there, I, I built it up. Yeah. yeah. But it was just like, I, I've learned now, because I always think like, would you ever uh, go to a comedy show or anything like that and say something like that to somebody and be like, like that guy said to you, would you ever go on Twitter and say, this is rubbish. You, I always think I wouldn't associate myself with ever doing that, so I shouldn't value your opinion. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, if you're not going to look at the negative comments, then you're only going to look at the positive comments. That's not going to do good mm -hmm. for you. No. Like, I am great, aren't I? Thanks a lot. That was an amazing gig. And then someone goes, I actually didn't think it was that good. And then you will focus on that one more. The, the Walmart thing is, I think, as a comic, that's hilarious. Yeah. You've made the crowd laugh and then... You've actually given a, you know, like a thumbs up to that person who's cut you deep, but you've you've taken and made it something positive. Yeah. If you yeah. can do that with your comments and things like that, great. That's the way to do it. I, yeah. I did a comedy club, uh, a gig, uh, in not that long ago, and the the uh, promoter was telling me, "You've played this gig before," and I was like, "I've never been here in my life." never been here I've done it for over 12 years he was like you've been here before and I was like I've not been in this room so I'm looking <laughs> I'm 
standing in a room going, have I been here before? Like trying to work it out. And then he said, oh, I've got the review from that show you did. And I was opening that night and he read the review from the stage manager who puts a review for all the acts and said, mm, struggled, but okay. Right? Oh, so gosh. I was like, what? I took his phone. I was like, are you kidding? Anyway, so I went on that night and told the audience. Like oh, okay. I told the audience that night, uh, get ready, strap yourselves in. This guy had a review five years ago that said I was okay, but struggled. And then the audience were laughing. So I used it and and that, that was the positive way yeah. to be about those sorts of 100%. comments. 100%. I think that I think that's the best way to go about it. Sure. Obviously, even if it's, it's still going to affect you in some way, but to just be like, and I've learned to do that with my comments too now. I love just like playing trolls at their own game, just taking their comments and making it, uh, Make it's it like, content, I'm not even pretending that I'm like not taking it to heart. Cause sometimes I genuinely don't, but pushing it back towards them yeah. and making them realize that actually their comments not affecting me that bad is the best way to go about it. But what are you, there's a lot of, I've only been to a couple of comedy shows in, in my life. And I find that it's so much better to like be there in person than it is to like oh, watch it on TV. 100%. Even when they're saying things that aren't necessarily supposed to be jokes, you're, I'm still laughing at it. But there's like, on social media been like a, I guess an uprising in, what do you call it when you're having like a one-on-one -on -one with someone in the audience? Like you're picking out what they've said to you or picking oh, out someone in the audience. I don't know what the word is, is for that. So we, we, you would call it like audience. a heckle. Heckle. Like you're being right. heckled. This a heckling can be either, you're not very good. Let's put it politely like that. And someone will interject, I've paid money for this. You're not delivering on what I expected. Then it, other people in the crowd uh, will sort of be thinking, well, no, he's actually doing well. So that can cause a little bit of a stir. The comedian's supposed to deal with it, address it. But other heckles can be, they just want to get involved. Like, that's so true, mate. Mush, that's so true. Yeah. As it's the coin of Samson phrase. And, um, and so you can use that, and that's really helpful. And then some crowds want to do that. And what tends to be on social media at the moment a particular comedy club up in Liverpool called Hot Water. Brilliant, brilliant club up there. Uh, it's all, people just want to watch the awkward interactions. So that seems to be the big thing at the moment. How does the comedian deal with people interjecting? Mm. And a lot of comedians don't want that to happen. They mm. just want to tell the, the jokes that they've written and, and stories and maybe ask a couple of questions to the crowd. So, so that, that it, it, but yeah, you just got to roll with it. You've just got to roll with it in the moment and, and try not to overthink, oh, I've got a put down line, which we call old school comedy which is if someone heckles you put them down yeah rather just work with it make them look like the idiot and then the crowd will be back with you but it is it's is daunting when someone heckles and you go i've got to deal with this I've it throws you off piece right it's, yeah it's, it throws it's you off. off but it can you be used to to win back as we mentioned earlier the awkwardness yes. can actually win the audience back over because the comedian's done an amazing thing and everyone's like that's so clever yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we're sitting there and go, that's so clever you can't have prepared that that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can i ask like just before i am going to move on to gaming in a minute again I know please we, can we, we? we do i've been bringing, waiting we do keep bringing it back but yeah do you know like as a comedian when you're on stage and you say something that hits you mentioned it before it feels great but you can't sell it can you you can't be like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to be nonchalant about it. Huh? You've just got to be like, keep, even though you've got all these endorphins and adrenaline running through you when they're laughing in, in unison or whatever, you've just got to be like, on to the next, but without showing it. Is that, yeah. is that accurate? Yeah. It, I think it also, to, to contradict that, it can be your style of comedy. So if you're quite deadpan, no, that, that wouldn't help to like fist pump the air <laughs> when, a, when a joke lands. But at the same time, if you're like me, conversational, observational comic, yeah. then actually by smiling and, and just sort of saying, this is great, the audience love it even more because yeah. it's like you're telling stories. That's my style. Yeah. Therefore, the audience are on board. They're enjoying it more. And it can. A little smile can actually... Uh, even if you're a deadpan comic, can let the audience go, oh, he doesn't actually mean, <laughs> he's, oh, right, he's kind of a character. So mm -hmm. it depends. It can go the opposite way and it won't, wouldn't be beneficial. And other times it can actually really lift the gig. Because it's. A, I always see comedy as being a once, this will never happen again. Often when I'm hosting a night, we'll say, this will never happen again. This is a, so get on board with one big team because mm -hmm. you will never have this lineup. It will never be the same. You'll not be next to that person. Mm -hmm. This is a once in a lifetime moment, get on board. And, and I think that can be for those big esports moments, especially in F1 esports. This, this isn't going to happen again. Yep. The driver lineups like this. So, yeah, so, yeah, just be in it's the It's a moment. good selling point, that. I always think, I think that's great for esports and just any sports in general, really, where you've got an arena and you can you can really highlight and, and drive that home. Because I do think people, it's, it's human nature to take things for granted in any situation, right? Mm, amen. And, and 
bringing that to the forefront as a host or whatever to say, hey, guys, you do realise this is, like, really mega special right now. Like, let's yeah. enjoy it. 100. Because if you're paying money to be in an event, chances are you won't have a good time. Yeah. So then that's a good way of getting everybody on your side. Like, even though I was saying about being an evil comedy viewer, I'm still going there wanting everyone to make me laugh and have a good time. Um, <laughs> and the evil comedy viewer. Yeah, I, I, but it's the anticipation of knowing where's this going? Where's it going? Where, where's it going is yeah. what you get a buzz on because it's live, it's in the moment. For yeah. sure. It's, it's not, you don't want them to not succeed. You just want to go... Oh, it, we're all aware that this is not anything landed. could happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's this co uh, comedian that's been going around on TikTok a lot recently, and the reason I was asking about the audience interaction thing, you see so many clips of him online, um, not in like a negative way, but interacting with uh, fans that like shout out or people that have gone to watch like shouting out, and he's really good at like the back and forth, mm. picking a person out and bantering with them. But then he released like a a special on Netflix. And it, he didn't do any of that. It was just like a full stand-up thing. And it was really, really bad. It was just like a complete 180. <laughs> it was. Yeah, right. So I'm, I'm not, I'm going to sit very much on a fence story of my life. I'm going to sit on the fence here and say that can happen. Mm. The written material or your jokes, your stories don't land, but your crowd interaction is like on point. Mm -hmm that tends to happen. So people will see the social media and go, oh, they were brilliant the way they dug out that the audience member. Go and see their stuff and they go, this is pony. <laughs> this is awful. That was a general consensus. And, and, and that, yeah. that can be the consensus. And But then that comic, you've got to see them live. You've got to go and see yeah. live comedy. And, sure. Yeah, and, and I think also for, for esports as well, to go for a long period when COVID was on, you couldn't go to see F1 esports. You couldn't go and watch that series. But there's such a buzz when you're in the same arena as the drivers. It's a LAN event and you get to feel that emotion. It's nuts. You're not going to get that watching, uh, streaming it live. You know? sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, 519, 570, what was it called? The 519 show, was it? Oh, we're going way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Just, I, just, I just briefly <laughs> just want to say because Yeah, well, it was weird. Yeah, it's I checked different. it. I checked it out. Don't, right? don't do that. What waste of your time, Ian? <laughs> but, well, I'm, look, I'm looking at some images from the 519. Oh, what, yeah. what year was it? I'd say, I don't remember, mate. All right, it, was, it was a while ago, right? And I'm going, it yeah. says here that Tom's on this show, but I'm just <laughs> unable to, to find him. And then I realised it's the guy with the big, long yeah. uh, hair. Yeah, and they, what do you call this again? Soul patch. Soul patch. The soul patch. Yeah. Soul and I was patch. like, is that him? Yeah, it's definitely me with uh, New Era hats. That was my big thing. Hey, they were cool then. Was it the 2000s, good. was it? Early uh, 2000s? Yeah. I got a whole bag of them in the shed, which my wife keeps reminding me. When are you going to get rid of them? I was like, you don't let those memories go. Ah, <laughs> is the soul patch ever going to come back on? No, it's not. No, she put, put an end to that. No, um, it, yeah, there was a long, long time ago. I was fresh out of uni yeah. and I didn't want to work in an office. And the 519 show was like, you'll be here five days a week. And I was like, this is not what I wanted. I want to be a like cool comic going around the world or uh but yeah i should have i should have got rid of the long hair and the, the hat no, it's, it's all now i've got the glasses now i need to, to, all, to, uh, to it, the interview i saw was him interviewing taylor swift 13 years ago true story yeah she was great really yeah yeah, yeah. oh my god what was that like was she, what was she like back then uh so there is a, a particular comedy club up um past in london uh from old street no it's uh angel up from there there's a regular comedy night that I would host. And then we were like, we're going to film with Taylor Swift in this particular upstairs pub room. And um, yeah, she was great. She was really, really cool. Talked about like, like around the area of London. I was like, oh, you want to go to this? There's these thrift shops, there's these things and that. And then I was interviewing her on radio and I remembered I'd mentioned my girlfriend to her. But then I started chatting on air uh, live and I said, oh, Taylor, just out of curiosity, my producer was egging me on. Uh, ask her out on a date. And she said, no, Tom, and tell your girlfriend I said hi. So I was just like absolutely pied. Um, but <laughs> it was nothing to do with the, the soul patch. Then. <laughs> no, nothing to do with soul patch. It could have been the soul patch, actually. She was lovely, I'm genuinely sure was lovely. Just, I'm sure it was no, just the soul patch. That's all. So it that's was. another regret. So put that in the regret pile. Uh, <laughs> I just I just think I, I was really fascinated. And I, I already knew you were like, obviously, like super cool guy. Um, always out and about doing different pieces of content. And uh, just re I, I always admire someone who's been able to do it for that long obviously in different <laughs> yeah. show -olds now no, it's, no, no, it's almost over okay, you could get me on the show we're before I do. we're literally the same age I think I'm 35 you're 36 7 just, up a, just up a little bit birthday in a couple of weeks yeah oh, oh cool but it's like it, you know it, we've seen a lot of you know the industry and, and media in general change dramatically over mm. those mm. years 
Um, but the, the longevity of people. So when I was doing the Elite Series and you're, you're working with these um, uh, like gamers that are like 16, 17, you're like, your life's way ahead of you. What's the longevity? What are you going to do? Not in terms of keep doing what you love yeah. is always my point. But they've got so many years ahead of them. There's one cast that I won't name his name, but I contacted him not that long ago. And I said, oh, hey, mate, I see you're doing really well. Everything's really cool. I want to do this thing. Is there any advice you'd give? And he was like, are you, are you still presenting? <laughs> Why are you not producing? And I was yeah. like, you cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> sort of suggest, and I think that's that thing. You that cheeky. <laughs> 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 Yes, the sound effect was from me. Um, but yeah, like there's this idea that age is this thing that you you must be producing now. Surely you're you're not making your own content, are you? You're, you you need to let everyone else do that. That's not for you. Yeah, I would. Yeah, strongly disagree with that. Some people just really enjoy it. Absolutely. Listen, F F one. Uh, we can talk about the actual traditional side of Formula One that I know you're involved with now, but. Talk us through your journey into Formula One esports and how much fun that is, because that scene has just like blown up over the last few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of a F1 fan are you both before I start? I So I don't know much about F1, but I did recently work an event where I was hosting alongside someone that knew much more about um, Dirk F1. Dirk Clip. Yes, I've seen. indeed. Oh, yeah, I hosted the event with him. And was um, Max Verstappen there as well? <laughs> Max Verstappen. Sorry, the world champion. <laughs> <laughs> I did this there. little thing. <laughs> See, that's always so funny to me because obviously someone that's like massively into F1 would probably be incredibly nervous by that. But because I'm not like massively an F1 fan, to me, he just seemed like another, like a normal person, which mm. was lovely. And it meant that I wasn't extremely nervous. I'm sure my co-host Dirk was absolutely bricking it though. Mm. But yeah, that was good. Um, and because of the, before I went, I wanted to get a little bit of, I guess, knowledge. So I did a little bit of research and stuff. And then I also did watch Drive to Survive, oh, <laughs> which people brilliant. were like, watch that. And I was like, I watched about three episodes of it on the plane. And I got really invested mm. into it actually, because they set it out to almost be like a drama show. Yeah, And there's a lot to it. I but think that got a lot of people on board. It did. Massively. Because the scene has grown so much. Like I see people on my, on my timeline these days who I wouldn't have ever thought would be into F1. Yeah. Massively into it and talking about it all the time. So it has grown so much. Um, and I want to know more about why that has happened. Uh, I, well. Oh, thanks to you, Tom. sort of serious uh, see, head yeah. on now. Yeah, well, the reason it's happened actually. Um, <laughs> well, I, I th well, everyone loved motor racing or, or sports racing games. That They love it and have done for a while. I think lockdown really exacerbated. It just went, just went crazy because we couldn't go out. We couldn't do certain things. There was no sport on. So the, um, uh, the, the virtual Grand Prix took over and everyone was like, what is this sim race? And I absolutely love it. Also a financial thing. If you want, if you love racing, you get to a certain point where you can't afford to go-kart anymore. It's a brilliant pathway into to being noticed and being seen as a really, really good driver. That is one thing I was considering when I was thinking about what sim racing is. I was like, most other sports you can, if you enjoy it, you can go out and try your hand at it, you know? You want to do darts, you can go to the pub and play darts. You want to play football, easily done. If you want to go out and drive a race car, not so much a thing that you can go and do. So sim racing, although obviously buying a sim racing rig is probably a lot more expensive. <laughs> Luckily, than we have a football. good few of them here at Guild, <laughs> which you can book. But good yeah, I was thinking it's one of those things that you can't just, you can't just go out and do it. No, but th 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 there's gateways in uh, to get excited about it. And if it's something you want to do, then it is a, brilliant investment mm. and and it's so much fun um so yeah w i guess they they wanted to try something f1 and um, the f1 game was available mm -hmm. made by code masters and um, we set out in 2017 thinking all right let's let's do this and make an opportunity and it was mad because the final was in abu dhabi at the grand prix That's and crazy. so as a presenter bonkers we've got a villa um in f1 the, the team that's leading the championship are right at one end and the worst team are at the other end. <laughs> and we were the one next to that, uh, which is quite funny. So we were the furthest away from Mercedes that year. And uh, we're, we're in this villa and it's like, we need to make this work. Mm -hmm. And I think my, my pressure was like, I just want to sell these drivers because they're incredible guys. Uh, and they're kind of, you know, really interesting their stories, where they've come from. They've had to give up go-karting. They signed for a driving academy, but then had to leave. All of these amazing uh, uh, sort of narratives. And then I'm at the villa thinking, I just want this show to go well. I just want this show to go well yeah. so that we have another one, so that this grows. And now it's year seven. 
Uh, it's hit a bit of a, uh, we, <laughs> I'm not going to drop any um, gossip on this, but it, it's hit a bit of a buffer at the moment, uh, which will get sorted, I'm sure. But yeah, it was, it's just amazing. And now the F1 teams are involved and they have their drivers. So Dirk Chocolate, who we mentioned, is at Red Bull. He's making all their content. And you've got these drivers that will hopefully go on maybe to be the sim racer for the, the F1 teams and actually work out what tyre degradation they should be aiming for. And, and that's what sim racing can help in real life racing. Yeah. So it's, it's been absolutely bonkers. And bonkers as well when they were like, in my ear, like uh, Fernando Alonso's coming up the stairs. He's going to join you now. There's a microphone <laughs> just below you uh, to pick up. So it's just uh, from an F1 fan to be there. It's amazing. And then to champion these drivers. And yeah, I've just absolutely loved it. And it's grown. And I'm very fortunate and blessed to, to still be asked back. Um, when I've got no driving ability. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, we, we, I mentioned some of the sim racing setups that we've got here at the HQ, and there was one out and about um, when, it, when it first arrived, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to take a seat in here and set, set it up. And someone came up to me and went, be careful. I was like, what are you <laughs> about? It's just a toy car, isn't it? Um, but no, it's it's very one one the one. It's like, you're going to break your wrists. I was like, okay, I'm not going on this. Yeah. I'll go have a drink. Those, those wheels can really uh, snap back. Spin back, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's cool. And I'm going to continue watching you guys do your thing on F1 Esports because it's one that I specifically want to get into because I just haven't really invested enough in it. And I think I want to become part of that community. Mm. I, do you know what yeah. I love? From last year, when we had a lot of uh, online events, uh, the championship, um, there was a lot of talk about a particular driver called Thomas Ronha cheating some, somehow. And doing the series, the championship last year, knowing everyone's talking about it online. And, and I think communities can be very positive. I think they can be incredibly negative. You've, yeah. got, to, you've got to sift through stuff. But they kept saying he's a cheat. He's a cheat. He didn't win last year. But this year, when we started the year seven, we're, we're a LAN event. You can't cheat. It's everyone set to eat. They, they're there. Mm -hmm. And he smashed it. And I was so chuffed for him. He's a, yeah, yeah, the finger point up, just, you know, across his lips, just shush. Yeah. And I love those stories. That's what I get a, a real buzz for, mm -hmm. is to see the guy that's had to take some absolute yeah. heat. Mm -hmm. Keep saying, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not guilty of anything here. No cheat. And it, and it is in that because it's a PC world and people are online. But just like that, that was a real buzz. And I to can't prove wait to prove everyone wrong. Yeah. And just be like, no, no, I am this quick. Yeah. And that, as that's the end of that, basically. I've got a challenge for you right now. Okay. Is it about bees? <gasps> Bring Can it we up. talk about the bees? Right. So obviously. Yo, you need to check your Wikipedia, brother. You really? really do. Yeah. So before guests come on, I usually have a little look through their Wikipedia because I thought, you know, trusted source of information. That's when you know you've made it, by the way. Um, Wikipedia and I just scrolled. You've done, there's a lot of things that you've done. Also, we never talked about Jinx because we had, yes, um, Jinx. we had Adam on, right? Who yeah, also Adam did Jinx. And that was the first time I ever found out about it. So when I saw that, I was really interested. However, what did pique my interest the most is apparently in 2021 mm. via Instagram live. Do you many Instagram lives, do you? I think you wrote this personally as a yeah. part <laughs> So Listen, I'm trying. Look, I'm way into my honey, but yeah, carry on. Deacon I was just trying to get a freebie. During lockdown, he had purchased his first bee colony and was hoping to release his own brand of honey called Tom Beacon. Right. <laughs> Do you know what? I would love to say that's true. It's not, but I I love it though. <laughs> <laughs> who has that. made that? Who would have made that up? <laughs> you know, association. I don't believe anything on here now. Yeah, I don't Tom think anything's Beacon. true. All right, go on. Throw another fact. All right, out. I, I don't think you were on the Rob Brydon show. Oh, I was on the Rob Brydon show. That was I good. I know you were. Good Dave's fun. one night stand. Yeah, you were there. Yes. Yeah. Um, the no, this is, this is it, all it real. needs to be updated. Everything needs to be updated. I sort of don't. Are you supposed to do your own Wikipedia? I don't. <laughs> Someone else know. do it. Because I tell you I what, I'm. I want them to create more stuff for me. If it helps There's, me get yeah. a hive, or you know, I mean, for free, the maybe they'll sponsor even me. Introduced a name, Tom Beacon. I was asked pretty clever. I'm ready for Tom Beacon. Thank right, you. So I'm glad we no clarified money. that. Hmm. Now it is That's time for. Bizarre. Can I get a drum roll, please? Survival mode. Oh, okay, he's done the voice again. Nice. Yep. You ready? Yeah. Do you want me to say what it is? Can I have a little moment just to, to compose myself after that? I wasn't expecting that voice to come out. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do is we ask all of our guests to, to take part in this, right? The last video game you played, first things first, you need to think about what that was. Have you got it? Oh, okay, right, okay. Yeah. I was listening, I was in listening no, mode, no, not doing good. mode. And then, <laughs> and then you have to imagine that tomorrow morning you wake up within that video game, within that world, and you need to tell us how you will survive. What was the last game you played? I'm really curious. He's not even told us yet. Um... 
All right. Well, look, I mean, uh, uh, conf confession time. Um, oh. Well, there's either football manager or, oh, right? <laughs> so <laughs> am I going to survive in that world? Very well, thank you. I <laughs> uh, know all about formations. And uh, I, uh, but then I was thinking about it the other day. Last of Us was the game. Oh. That I could put, Last of Us 2. Last of Us 2. Which I don't know if I want to be in that world trying to You're survive. In it, now, it was terrifying. Wicky, wicky, how are you going to deal with it? <laughs> how am I going to deal with it? Yeah. Just um, headphones on. The bit in the sort of cinema area was uh, terrifying. Um, yeah. How am I going to survive? I'm going to have to be a brave boy. And what I'm going to have to do is find some Tom Beacon honey <laughs> <laughs> yeah. as soon as I can. Dose up on that and get running. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Running. Never stop running and get out of there. What's your, you weapon, of, what's your weapon of choice? Uh, but do you know what? I've had to improve because for some reason someone was like, you should come back and play football. Um, and then my hamstrings were like, that was a terrible idea. Don't listen. Don't be swayed, you sheep. Um, uh, do so I your hammies are going to go and you're going to get eaten by a zombie is what you're telling me. Yeah, but then Not I can offer them honey. honey. Do zombies yeah. like honey? I'm sure they do. They got a sweet they like tooth. Everything. They, love they it. do. It's flowerless. Um, they might be gluten free. <laughs> do zombies worry about that? Anyway, sorry. Most likely. Uh, that's how I would survive as best I could. The other one, um, fall out. I mean, I don't. <laughs> good, ter terrible at that surviving. Yep. Last of Us Two. I would try and remember some of those moments that I've been through. Maybe being ambushed by a gang and just hide and not come out. Been ambushed by a gang. Yeah, in Last of Us 2, just towards the end. Oh, oh. I, I don't want to ruin it, but... Life. I thought you were oh. on your way here. <laughs> Always. People are desperate for that honey. There he goes, that guy who's a beekeeper back from 2021. Where did this He's got a colony. From? I'm gonna, I, don't, I think you're lying to us. I think you do have a he bee colony. He does have it. Yeah. He does. I believe him. I, no, I don't believe him. You believe the wiki? There was an there was a offer going on in Lidl, you know, that middle aisle. And they had a beekeeper's outfit. And I thought, you know what? If it's reduced, I'm, I'm going to get involved in this. It seems like I wasn't surprised at all. It seemed like something you would you would do, to be honest. I look the sort of person. I know this is a podcast, but I, uh, Google me. Not the one with the soul patch. He looks like he would. <laughs> but the guy now currently. All right, let me have a look. Does Do I look like someone who'd keep his own bees? <laughs> I don't have any friends anymore, so I'm going to get myself some bees. Well, it was in lockdown. my friends. It was in lockdown, so maybe you just needed something to do. I fully believed it. Wow. Believed it. Very good. Is that it? Yeah. Is that, that no, there's another soul patch version? Ah, right. there's quite a few in there. Images. Is that you? That's not you, right? Yeah, that's me. That's oh it. my god. Old school. Yeah. yeah. That's what you call. Do you skateboard? You. Yeah, big the time. Twenties. Tony, Tony Hawks, mate. Oh, Tony Hawks all Hawk. day long. You know, some of the some of the amazing. I thought we were going to talk about some of my favorite games on this. Let's well because we're <laughs> running out of time. But let's let's rattle through some of your favorite games ever because Tony Hawks you mentioned there yeah. is like. I think it's. I think it's scored. We, we talked about it's on really high. Like ninety-two percent because yeah. it's like one of those absolute classic playable games from. We you play it on PS One, of course, right? Yeah. Is, what else did you like? Uh back in the day, we are talking uh, Duke Nukem, yes. Serious Sam, which was an amazing. Do you remember on Duke Nukem? Yeah. The money and the yeah, shake it. Money in the honey. Shake it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but basically, lines. they had an 18 version. My dad was like, right. He, he took that off. So I would be just Duke Nukem shake at it. a pole yeah. uh, in, in the game. Just go, shake it. And I'd be like, I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> Wait, well, why, yeah. am I, why am I throwing money at a pole with no one there? Oh. And then, yes. And then, but you can play two versions of the game. You hit space bar, shake it. I'd be like, I don't understand. Anyway, that was an awkward conversation at dinner time with my parents. Because yeah. it's amazing. It's an amazing game. Serious Sam, play that with my dad. Like, amazing game. It's all fun and games till somebody loses an eye. It's the quotes that you remember from games. Then Mortal Kombat to like a whole host of. I'm, I feel like I'm losing you here. No, 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 no. no, no, no I'm I feel like I'm losing you. Are you not losing this, me? This no, I'm losing you. This my, isn't a game. My, my favorite question is. I've lost the crowd. Ian's loving it. How awkward is it? I'm just waiting until you say a game that I've also played. Uh, Max Payne blew my mind. Mm -hmm. The first ever. Medal of Honor, which was oh, incredible. I and then it's so funny the when you watch it back. Oh, you the feel like, sequence. oh, so I shooting think there's a games. a classic games that I need to play. Yeah, maybe I was never into like, cause Duke Nukem is like, kind of like a big destruction game, right? Mm. Well, Isn't you're just it? that big muscly guy with the thing. Yeah. But because the, there was, wasn't there a new, oh wait, what, no, what no, was- Duke Nukem's like a I'm first thinking of, I'm thinking of Doom. I'm thinking oh, of- Do Oh, Doom yeah. was, weird. and, and Halo, Halo made me go and get an Xbox. I was like, I have mm. to play this game. And that blew my mind. One of the greatest games of all time. There's so many good games. First ever console. Uh, for the, the NES. 
N E S. The Nez. Ever seen a Dreamcast, you man. Old man. Yeah, no, I feel it on this show. Do you know what you've made me feel? You've made me feel old. I wish I had my soul patch, and my long hair, <laughs> and I didn't have to deal and with my this. Skateboard. But pack. that was when you had like a cartridge on the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in, Ka-ding. yeah. I still had to do that with the PlayStation One though. Like what? the PlayStation One wasn't perfect. That thing had all no. kinds yeah, of but things. But cartridges were just. What about Echo? Echo, Echo the, the Dolphin. Dolphin. Oh, the Mega Drive. Classic. And then the Sonic the Hedgehog. The up, down, left, right. All of that combos. The, gaming was my like growing up sister brother. You're just playing constantly. Yeah. Now I've got really excited now. I'm smiling. Me too. I'm, th- I'm thinking about Echo the Dolphin. I haven't thought about that game in a <laughs> long Echo time. And it was just magical. Echo the Dolphin on the, the Mega Drive. I need to go and play some retro games because we do, we tend to talk a lot about like retro games on this podcast. Yeah, we do. Always the classics. What about like recent, what about, I guess, obviously The Last of Us you've been playing through. Just phenomenal. What a game. What other? Ten. But but just because because it was so immersive. So headphones on, I'm there just letting out little shrieks every now and again. And my wife being like, are you all right? And I'm like, this game is so good. Like really just <laughs> being in that moment. It was basically um, an actual VR, but without being VR. Um, and I just loving Modern Warfare because of what it allows to connect with people. And then just one of the maddest experiences with working with Matt Gallagher, uh, he was like, do you want to play? Do you want to meet up? Should we, should, we just, should we just do it? And I was like, yeah, let's, let's play online. And he's like, oh, can my mate join? Anyway, it only turns out to be James Milner, this footballer. So I'm playing as a team. We're a trio. <laughs> and I, what? And then Matt Gallagher's like, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, James, he's the footballer, James. And I'm like, Mike holding it on my side <laughs> from the headset. Just going, uh, like, George, Georgie's my, my wife's now. I was like, Georgie, George, George, George. <laughs> James Milner. She's like, who? I'm like, who? I'm like, trying to play. And when I revived James Milner, it was one of the best feelings of my life. That's amazing. I just revived James Milner. Yeah, so like moments like that, very cool. And then playing, yeah, anyway. But that's, that's what gaming amazing. is when you yeah, connect. Yeah. Love oh, it. I, that, you just reminded me of a story when me and my brother watched, do you know the rapper Ice-T? Yeah. The, he's like an OG. And he did this for some reason. He was obsessed with Gears of War and he put this video up on, um, on YouTube of him unboxing like a... a Life size Lancer that he put on his wall and like this all this retro stuff. And he logged in to start playing it. And Al, my little brother, saw his um game attack. So we added him and tried to invite him to a party. <laughs> and he joins the party. He's like, hey, what's up, guys? Who's this? No. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and like we just had a few words, wrapped it up, and uh it's, it's just amazing when you can connect with people online, yeah. especially like... <laughs> I don't know. And it, and James it's Milner just scarily easy, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, and James Milner, he, he didn't keep it. He was potty mouth. What's a potty mouth? He was <laughs> being shot at. Uh, and then Lando Norris, what a sniper. What a sniper playing with him. That was awesome. Lando Norris? What? Yeah. Christ. Mad. That's it. That's all my bragging done. Give me but, some more. Dr- drop some more names. There's, that's it. That's it. We're done on that. Because he hasn't but, played with us yet, Ian. No, but I, th- that's what it was about. And I just remembered in my head... Uh, Assassin's Creed took a lot of my time. Uh, the one set in Greece, that was just yeah. marching around, chatting to people, stopping people and getting, you know, stop. I think uh, that's another one I'm going to add to my, my list of ones. I've told myself more RPGs this year. I'm going to do Red Dead Redemption. Never done Red that Dead. Was, that was another one. Classic. George, I'm going to do George, Witcher. Oh. Never done Witcher. George, Guys. Would, yeah, we got to wrap it up. No, I've, Sorry, got, I've, break, got, no, I've, no, I've break, got to go. I've got some breaking news. I know you've got to go, but... I don't actually. This is our longest podcast yet, right, Pete? <laughs> Produce Pete. I can confirm that we've broken the record for our longest podcast yet. Is that, that means you is are... That really? Yeah, that's because how good of a guest you are. Oh, I could keep funny. going. Oh, we, Tom, you've I, been we amazing. Talk, yeah, I mean... Before we go, where can we find you online? I'd just on my Instagram is probably the best. It's the only one I keep up to date with. Tom Deacon comedy. I put the comedy in just so that people can be confused. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and his the, alt account, the, the Tom comedian. Beacon. Tom yeah. Beacon. Maybe a good Beacon. post would, would be <laughs> <laughs> a good post would be some of the dodgy hairdos from the past. Oh god! Oh, you should bring that back. Oh, do I can't. It. I'm going to go look them up afterwards. Along All right. With, well, along with the Beehive um, is, Instagram live stream. That if you want to go into business with, we could chat about that afterwards. Uh, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for for having me on. Thank you. We've loved that chat. You've been amazing. I wish we talked more about. Favorite games because I feel like there's probably loads more in common. Yeah, we talked about. But unfortunately, I haven't played a lot of the classics, so I need to get on that. All right, well, Tom, it's been a pleasure. I'm out of here. Adios. Ciao. Thank you. Obrigado. We'll have to have him back. Obrigado. Let's get. Let's let's see if we can get. There you go. Obrigado. Obrigado. Learning that one. Do. Obrigado. I've been told. Yeah. I won't say that on stage. Um, (laughs) Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Harry. And we'll be back with another episode soon of In the Lobby here at Guild. Bye. Bye. Thank you.